there, Curvers. Welcome to the 86th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. This is your host and producer, Jemmy, from Flintstone Media. And uh, this is episode number 86 with DJ and music composer Alex Arietti. Um, I got to catch up with him. And if you do not recall, rewind because you'll remember him from episode 11. In fact, I encourage you, stop the tape right now, go back, listen to episode 11 first, um, and then come back to this episode, and you'll just be even more impressed with how wonderful this kid is, how long he's been doing what he's doing, how passionate he is, um, and how he's just going to be trudging along for the rest of his life doing amazing things with his music. You'll be so impressed with the journey this kid has been on. It's been awesome to have a front seat and watch it uh, myself. He's um, grown so much. Um, when we last sat down, gosh, it was, do, 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 I'm trying to remember exactly, I think it was like January of 2015, so about a year and a half ago, and, you know, physically, musically, emotionally, mentally, all the above, it's incredible to see how much um, Alex has grown, and he's continued to develop his skills as a musician and to create new original tracks. Um, he's even been traveling for different events and shows and things, so he's really um, just really grown as a person, as a human being, and it's, and it's really, really cool to watch. You know, he's been meeting amazing EDM mentors and collaborating with different artists and people on different on different uh, projects and stuff. And um, but th- and then that's only half of the story. I mean, he's also continuing to excel. With his dance, he's been competing regularly and doing very well. He does ballroom dance as well. And being a bit of a ballroom dance aficionado myself, uh, every time I watch his videos, I'm just so impressed. He has such skill, great lines, great feet. He's awesome, and I'm just so proud of him. Um, so Alex talks to me on this podcast about how he's how he's grown musically and artistically, um, how important his parents' support continues to be, uh, and and just all the wonderful things that he's doing and continuing to do and will do in the future. Um, he's you can catch him on Palm Beach FM every other Tuesday night. It's an internet radio station down here. I think it's just Palm Beach FM. There's no additional dot com. Just Palm Beach FM, and you get to hear him live. Uh, and not only is he now a resident DJ with them, but he's also doing his own interviews. So guests will come in and he'll interview them. It's pretty neat. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's so exciting to have, um, to be in the position to see such a wonderfully talented and passionate kid, and super sweet by the way, uh, to see him pursue his dreams um, with such fervor and focus. It's really inspirational, and I can't wait to see where this kid goes. Um, Catch him and follow him yourself at alexarietti.com. That's A-L-E-X-A-R-I-E-T-E.com. He's also on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook um, and Mixcloud and Soundcloud, all as Alex Arietti Music. Um, And also look him up on YouTube as well. And... Like I said, go back, rewind to episode 11, then listen to this one, and you're just going to love this kid as much as I do. As always, with uh, these Curve the Cube kids, their episodes are always sponsored by Little Smiles of Florida. Little Smiles is focused on providing, basically like kind of resetting things for kids that are really going through a tough time. Um... They'll try to help however they can, whether it's a medical situation, a financial situation, um, anything that kids go through that's really, really tough, that kids shouldn't have to deal with, um, you know, Little Smiles will step in and try to help out however they can um, by providing special equipment or, you know, perhaps putting on an event or doing all kinds of fun things and putting that little smile back on that little face and they're so good at what they do and so dedicated they're really mostly an army of pure volunteers and the ones that the one or two that do get paid they don't get paid enough and they do so much for for these kids so i encourage everybody to go to littlesmiles.org and just make a straight donation or um you know try to try to focus on the florida chapter because they keep things here in the community but make a straight donation and um if you can't do that attend one of their fun events that are always doing these cool fundraisers and things different kinds of events um 
from <laughs> your 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 local golf tournament to just a, basically a raging party for the Stars Ball or something like that. So it's an event for everybody. Um, go check them out. And um, yeah, and with that, I'll say sit back and oh, thank you as always. Oh, and if you go to Little Smiles, I'm forgetting all kinds of stuff. Go to LittleSmiles.org, and uh, you can also you can donate, you can attend an event, or you can just buy some gear. Use uh, the promo code Curve Smiles. You get 10% off, and the proceeds go to Little Smiles. So all of that is a win-win. Um, <clears throat> thank you to DJ John Hitta for my music beds as always, and follow Curve the Cube all over the place. Um, you know the drill: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, da da da. With that, I will say sit back and relax, and welcome to this, the 86th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast with Curve the Cube kid, Alex Arietti. Enjoy! Curve the Cube will now initiate. Hi! Hello. How are you, hun? Hi, good. Good to see good you. To see every you. time, so much taller. Every yeah, time, every, every time. time without fail. I feel so <laughs> right? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. How are y'all? Good. Good, how, good. How was, how was the, every time, so much taller. How was the <laughs> drive up here? Not, not too bad. It was um, a couple spots of traffic, but generally speaking, not, not too bad. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, after you pass, I guess. Okeechobee, West Where are you Palm. coming from? I forgot. Well, today I came from Pompano. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> we used to live so, in Pompano. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a yeah. fun drive. I, I but it's okay. No, don't feel sorry. And... Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? It's a pleasure. You know, so, uh, what time to come hang out? We're going to do it here again, right? Uh, yeah, that'd be that's, great. That's what we did last time. Sounds fabulous. And, uh, Perfect. So. Oh, my you gosh. I love your in, shoes. Um, Thank you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. So whatever you guys want, you guys um, shall have. <laughs> okay. It's up to you. Totally. Just a cool recorder. Two microphones. Oh, thank you. It looks like something out of Ghostbusters. How apropos. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen that movie yet? No, I haven't. No? No, I've never seen it. Any no? Ghostbusters. None of them? Oh, no. my goodness. No. I know what your homework None project needs to be immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with homework. <laughs> homework. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, Ghostbusters is such a. What have you heard about the original Ghostbusters? Have you heard anything about the original ones? Well, I have. So, All they do is shoot ghosts, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and make lots of really great jokes. Um, fight monsters. It's a great movie. It's it's really? yeah. I actually just introduced my son to it. Maybe. Um, about a month or so ago. Loves it. Really? Loves it. Loves both the first two originals, and we just took them to see the new one. Uh, I just took them the other day, so. Uh, 2016. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Highly recommend them. Really? Yeah, for sure. I've never watched it. What kind of movies do you usually like? Ooh, oh. chocolate. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> just made my day. Um, what kind of movies do you usually like? My favorite movie mm-hmm. series, maybe probably Transformers. Transformers, okay, good pick. Mm-hmm. Good pick. I love Transformers. Did you see the uh, latest uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? The second one. The new one, the one that just came out. Um, when did it co- when did it came come? out like a month ago? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just came out like a month ago. Your boy Vanilla Ice was like all involved with the project. Oh uh, really? <laughs> yeah, he had the premiere. In City no, Place. I watched the first part. The oh, okay. First one, okay. Not the second one. Yeah, this one was really good. And if you and the reason I ask is because if you're a fan of Transformers, you're gonna really like you'd really like this movie because it's similar in like the, the action Busters? sequences. No, no, no. The second uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. The first one's similar. Yeah, yeah. It's really good too. Action sequences are great, so highly recommend it. But anyways, how are you? Good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Speaking of Vanilla Ice, um, how? Fun and cool was it for you to do his rap party? That what was that like? About six months ago now, maybe a little longer. I'm trying to think. Uh, the DIY network. Yeah. This project. Yeah. Well, it was actually pretty cool. It was yeah. amazing. I had a great time there. Yeah. Um, especially you know I want to thank him so much because you know I feel honored. He he invited me three times for three seasons. Yeah. You know? So um, I mean obviously. I know that he really enjoys and he is busy with all of his things. Mm-hmm. 
and he has the time to choose me to be yeah. the DJ for the last episode um, for the party. So thank you so much, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like he, he's been a great mentor to you and and, um, and stuff. And you did a great job. I was so appreciative. And thank you to you and your family for inviting me along. It was, oh, it was no, a fantastic party. It was a fun yeah, time. How cool is it to, to DJ? That was a unique DJ space. That pool and everything, that mm. pool area was... <laughs> Well, very different. Very it was awesome. A little different. It was yeah. Cool. I was actually a little bit scared. Why? Because everything was close to the pool, so it doesn't oh, get splashed. Oh, that's true. That's true. Because I just remember, wasn't the like that sunken hot tub like right in front of where you were? I think there was like a sunken a sunken hot tub yeah. or some sunken area there. I'm like, yeah. That was only maybe four feet away from where you were yeah. DJing. We were like, okay, that's kind of dangerous. But there was no space anywhere else. So. Yeah. Yeah. Biggest space there yeah. was so there was nothing else really yeah let me tell you it's been so much fun watching you continue to grow up over the last uh, I guess year and a half since the last time we sat down like this um, you've been I mean both physically and you know musically professionally all of that you've, you've just been growing up like crazy what has the last year and a half been like for you one word <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, good crazy, I hope, more than yeah, bad yeah. crazy. I mean, it's it's been a great year and a half Yeah. because I've learned so much since then. Like, yeah. You know, you listen to my songs sometimes mm -hmm. and you can really hear the difference from the past to now. For sure. You know, everything, even in DJing, the skills that I do and even I, I get bigger events nowadays. So my career is kind of evolving now. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, when we recorded this podcast, you had just come up and conceived your new DJ name and you were about to oh, like release sorry, it yeah, and yeah, announce yeah, yeah, it yeah. and like change over from DJ Pop Drop and all that stuff. You're about to like become this Alex new, Sorry. yeah, a little more grown up and everything. What has been, what's it been like transitioning kind of your public personality or your, your brand? How's it been like that for you? It wasn't that hard actually yeah. since I was in a big DJ mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really challenging at all. So okay. Actually, most people liked it because lots of people thought that DJ Prop Drop was a childish. Yeah, DJ. yeah, yeah. I mean, it made sense and, and worked, but I get why you decided to change it too. Well, it's also because of um, trademark reasons mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Some um, guy had a DJ name called DJ Drop, so oh. it's, it's kind of similar, so I wasn't allowed to trademark mine. Gotcha. So I changed it. Gotcha. That makes sense. Since then, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. But I think this name is better. It's more professional, and lots more people like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's great. It really works for you, I, and I think it looks really great on the back of your. Um, the way you have it on the back of your Computer. laptop. Yeah, like it really, it really pops. You know, yeah, it's mine. good. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, DJ Pop Drop. It was a good name. It was just this beginning starter name. Yeah. Everyone has a beginning name. Absolutely. Martin Garrix had um, a different name, DJ Marty, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, you know, we always change and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How would you say you've been growing over the last year and a half as a musician? How have your skills changed? If I were to listen to a song that you recorded a year and a half ago and a song that you developed now, how would they, how would they be different? Well, they would be different in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, it would be different mixing and mastering, like mm -hmm. tracks, the loudness as well, and the quality, you know. Usually, you know, when you listen to 90s songs, the quality isn't as good as the modern. Right, right. And when I was making my music a year and a half ago, it sounded like the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> the quality. <I> mean. <laughs> the quality. Yeah. So, yeah. pretty much everything changed quality-wise, especially. Yeah. In my music. Yeah. And I have a better studio now and I have um professional microphones. So so basically all that helps mm -hmm. and that's basically how everything's changed within the year and a half. Yeah. Everything everything's more professional now for me. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely seen you expanding your horizons and a lot of I mean, you've done so many other performances and stuff. Um can you kind of give a recap of her, what you've been up to for the last year and a half? Oh man, I've been up to... <laughs> a lot! 
Yeah, oh my god, I can't even... <laughs> it's been hard to keep up with you, to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes I can't even remember half my big gigs. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes. Right. So, um, last year, 2015, I DJed um, at the Exit Festival in Europe. So it's the It was rated the biggest European festival um, in 2014. Wow. So I DJed in 2015, and... Isn't that kind of like like their version of Ultra, uh, isn't it similar? Is it similar to Ultra? Is that a good comparison? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's similar. Mm -hmm. It's definitely smaller, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but but it's 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 the biggest festival in Europe. Yeah, yeah. So it's the most popular, and it's in Serbia, where my grandma's from. So it kind of comes absolutely <laughs> full circle. Yeah. So um, I actually became a resident at my radio station. Mm -hmm. um, Palm Beach FM, mm -hmm. it's called. It's actually an online radio. You can listen to it. Yeah, where do people go? It is. It's just. It is just yeah, Palm Beach Palm Beach FM, right? FM. Yeah. Yeah. No dot com or anything. Right. Just that. And I became a resident. I go there every two weeks. My show is called Dance Therapy, mm -hmm. and I'm the host there. And basically, you know, I play any genre that I want. You know, yeah. Usually house music because I love house music. <laughs> surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Such a surprise, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I can So many yeah. different things going on. It has um, to have been just a blur. I mean, it's you've been. I so went busy. at the Winter Music Conference. Which music conference? Winter Music. Oh, conference. Winter Music. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's in March mm -hmm. every year, and I got to meet all those famous DJs. Oh my gosh! Like who? Who'd you get to meet? Um, I met Rehab, Oliver Heldens, Steve Aoki. I met. Oh my gosh. What was I? Did your brain explode when you were meeting all I these people? I was actually, you know, <laughs> when I was giving them my USBs mm -hmm. with my music, mm -hmm. when I gave it, gave my USB to the first two or three big DJs, yeah, I was like, oh, this is easy, and then <laughs> it was a piece of cake. I was just because I was in the VIP area, yeah, and when they came off the stage, I immediately like. Ah, my yeah, name's Alex. <laughs> there you go. This way to do it. Yeah. So, lots has been going on this year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy, busy year. How did the whole thing with Palm Beach FM get going? How did that start? Well, it started um, by um, I DJed at the Supercar Week. Show. Mm, I remember that. That was on Clematis, or was yeah, that, that right? was on Clematis. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And I met uh, the radio station owner mm -hmm. and. He saw me DJ. He's actually um, like a visual effect producer, and oh. he all had all these effects on stage. So mm -hmm. he decided to um, call me or like contact me um, to ask me if I could actually DJ on the radio show. Wow. But first, I actually wasn't um, the host, mm -hmm. but later I became the host, and it just kept going from then. Wow. So what do you do as, what's the hosting part of it? What is that? Well, sometimes I um, invite other people mm -hmm. to get interviewed. Like I interview, I interviewed Terry B like mm -hmm. a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. You did great. Thank you. You did Thank great. You so You're natural. Um, I interviewed Mr. Gray. I interviewed um, DJ Keith C Christopher. I um, mean, I interviewed so many different people. So sometimes I interview people and sometimes I just DJ throughout the whole um, set that I have. Yeah. Um, but sometimes uh, when Terry B came, she actually sang while I was DJing. That's amazing. And um, Ms. DJ Mr. Gray, um, he's also a pretty famous DJ, um, mm -hmm. he DJed after me. So basically... Sometimes I interview people, and sometimes I just go on my own. Yeah. Is there, from, from doing the interviews, is there, has there been, like, a moment that really was just super cool or really exciting for you? Well, I was always excited on those interviews. Yeah. And I was always like, hey, <laughs> how are you? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, just, just say hi. Buttering them up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm always comfortable there you in front go. of interviews, just like this one. <laughs> there you go, yeah. there you go. Well, I'm glad um, I could always be a part of it. Yay! What have you been working on from a skill standpoint? I know you said that um, 
from between now and then, a big difference is the sound quality and sounds like a lot of that has to do with, with the, the equipment, but from a skill standpoint, how have your skills grown to, to affect the quality of your music? Um, well, talking about my skills, yeah. my skills started to improve when I went to the uh, master class and LDJ course. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to um, Winter Music Conference, but it's more of a master class where the famous DJs, they actually teach you. Wow. Um, it's like a small group of people, Yeah. Um, but they're actually pretty decent producers, so we're all related to that, and mm -hmm. the big DJ, you know, he teaches us these tricks, and my, my skills just went up another thousand levels, oh my because gosh. I learned so many new things um, in my music production program, because yeah. there was like, I don't know, there were like six or seven different DJs throughout that whole week, mm -hmm. and every day, it was like four or five hours, almost non-stop. Oh my gosh, just that's intense. Music, like, were you one of the youngest, like, yeah, students youngest or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, right? By yeah, a lot. Of course. <laughs> and for my for my listeners who may not know, how old are you? Fourteen. <laughs> You know, meeting Steve Aoki and like all these dudes and guys dudes, and having yeah lives, your own FM yeah. radio show or you know <laughs> going on festivals. a big deal yeah just going out some festivals big deal <laughs> whatever yeah <laughs> playing in Serbia you know whatever so yeah speaking of Serbia I also have noticed that you've been traveling a lot in the last year is that is that up from previous years, or is that fairly normal? Where, what have you been traveling for? What have you been doing? Uh, well, it actually depends. Yeah. Um, sometimes we just go for vacation. Sometimes yeah. um, we go for a serious trip. Some, um, like last, two weeks ago, um, I had a ballroom dancing competition, mm -hmm. so we went to New York. Mm -hmm. And three weeks ago, I had another competition, but that was in Pan Panta, Tampa, in <laughs> Florida. Panta, <laughs> Panta yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so we travel around a lot everywhere. We usually don't stay home. Yeah. Um, like last year, or no, two years ago, I think, we traveled to China. Um, we traveled Thailand to Japan. Wow. We traveled, we went to Serbia last year. Mm -hmm. We went to a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's been one of the most enjoyable for you? The most enjoyable for me is probably China mm. because I love Chinese accents. And really? Chinese oh. I like to do Chinese accents. Really? No Chinese accent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Or do you think you ever want to learn how to speak Chinese? I was actually thinking about um, learning Chinese. You should. On my homeschooling course. Yeah. That I have. But but my mom said it's too complicated. It's just, very just complicated. Learn Sp just learn Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complicated, but yeah. I think I think you could. I Those symbols go left, right, up, down. It's crazy. It's so different. So different from our alphabet and everything. It's like confusing. oh my gosh. It's yeah. Very yeah. 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 <laughs> totally. You know, just. Um, <laughs> there are stories of people who go out and get tattoos of what they think. You know, it says in Chinese, only to find out later that it doesn't say anything like that at all. Yeah. So, yeah, it might be good to have a friend every once in a while who can speak a little Chinese. Mm -hmm. So, if you do learn, I'm definitely keeping or you on Google Translate. <laughs> Google Translate. I don't know. I don't know if I trust it. I don't know if I trust it enough. <laughs> so, speaking of your your dancing and everything, I mean, yeah, you you were just in a couple of competitions, and I know how seriously you take your your dancing too. What is your how has your dancing evolved over the last year and a half? Uh, dancing has been going well. I'm still yeah. dancing with my same dance partner for yeah. four years now. <laughs> it's a very long time. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're still trying hard. We're improving mm -hmm. in the competition. I got first, no, no, second, first, first, second wow. places. So we're improving mm -hmm. a lot more throughout the year and a half. You know, we practice only once a week because, you know, my partner lives in Miami, and it's yeah. pretty far away yeah. from where I live. Yeah. It's like an hour away. So. I know. It's crazy. Lots of miles. Lots of miles. <laughs> yeah, lots of miles. For so, sure. Yeah, I mean, we've been improving so much um, in general, and 
What's been your favorite um, dance to work on lately? My favorite dance maybe is Jive mm. because, probably because I'm the best at it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the most tiring because, you know, you got to kick legs you know, all the time. Kick yeah, all da, the da, time. Da, da, da. Yeah. yeah, really yeah. quickly. So it's really challenging. But sometimes in the competition, like, I kill it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with Jive. So that's my favorite it just constantly constantly keeps changing yeah you know? yeah. yeah sometimes it's cha cha sometimes it's rumba you know, <laughs> drive you know. i saw you in the um how was it called downtown's got talent competition mm -hmm. and i was like how neat because i looked at your performance i was like how neat is it that you can start off showcasing one talent and then halfway through cut into showcasing another talent yeah. by doing, uh, you know, dancing to Jitterbug and stepping out from behind your computer and just laying it on the dance floor. I was like, yeah. look at this kid go. Yeah. It was, I mean, and you could hear that you could hear the, the audience like, what? Like you're, you totally, Screaming. yeah, you yeah. took them aback and that was pretty awesome. What was that? What was that moment? Was that the jive that you were dancing? Or was that, is there yeah, an actual dance jive. called the Jitterbug? Jive. <laughs> yeah, no, that's jive. Okay. That's actually jive. Um, but I've improved a lot since then, and yeah. I think on the next act that I did was Cha Cha. Yeah, instead yeah. Instead of Jive. Yeah. Or was it switched around? I'm not sure exactly. Um, but I actually got chosen by the crowd um, because the judges didn't choose me to pass around, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like the um, audience could choose who they wanted to put through. Nice. The, the next week. And, yeah. You know, they chose me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Go audience, go audience. What was that? What was that moment though, like for you when you uh, started dancing and the audience like picked up on it and like went crazy because they went pretty crazy. <laughs> what was it like? Yeah. Oh, it felt cool. But yeah. There was one point where I almost forgot the routine and oh. I got scared oh. for a quick second. <laughs> 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 But I don't show it on my face. No, you so, handle it flawlessly. Yes, yeah, so the audience, um, I guess they were cheering for me. Yeah, yeah, they totally were. I think you, you absolutely won them over. Yeah. For yeah. sure. For sure. You have you have a way of, um, yeah, of just winning people over. You're like, a, like that crowd favorite kind of performer. Yeah, I guess so. You know? Yeah, usually, you know, when I play at events, mm -hmm. sometimes they just go crazy when yeah. I play a song sometimes. Yeah. Even my song. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely um, such a professional at such a, a young age, and I know you've been doing this now for a long time. You're dancing, you said, for four years. Um, and how long have you been doing your music again? Four years. Four years, yeah. So in that time... Dancing, maybe, da dancing five years, but four with my dance partner. Gotcha, my okay. Current dance partner. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and, 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 and in that amount of time, I mean, to see... I mean, just the amount that I've seen you grow has been phenomenal, and you're you're such a professional performer. Um, how do you, at such a young age, like rein in your energies and focus on what you have to do and stay so disciplined? Um, well, about school, um, mm -hmm. that's it's not too hard. It's not too challenging, and I'm happy that it's not too challenging mm -hmm. because. Um, I'm homeschooled, and mm -hmm. it's much easier when you're homeschooled and mm -hmm. everything. So basically, it's really easy to juggle things around, yeah. and, and doing school is so much easier for me now. Um, Good. Because it's actually easier than public school, even if I wasn't doing DJing at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically, everything kind of blends in together. Sometimes I have really tight schedules during the week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I have production classes. Sometimes I have drumming. Sometimes I have dancing. Yeah, you do so much. Um, but it's not too challenging because I only do four or five hours, maybe sometimes six, um, homeschool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an online class that I take. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's really easy. I don't even have to do homework. It's just assignments and lessons. Yeah, yeah. But there's something I think, you know, <clears throat> kids kids can be love love to do what they do and have fun, you know, they might want to play baseball or want to be um, a piano player or a guitarist or something like that, but there's sometimes there's a kid that stands out that you can tell gets it that they need like this is this is something that you'd have to take seriously if you're going to go far and 
how do you make sure you take it seriously? I guess is my question. Yeah. How do you take everything seriously? Yeah, everything that you ha that you you do because you you do a lot, mm -hmm. but you excel at all of it, and it's really impressive. Um. Well, how? Do you mean like how I do everything? Yeah, yeah. How do you stay so focused and professional? I mean, when you're on stage, it's like you're you're so professional. Oh well, I don't know. It's just like the switch on and off. Yeah. Like sometimes. When it's serious, serious time, it's serious time. Yeah. Or when I get, on, get off stage, I'm like, ha! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've definitely seen you be a goofball. Yeah. That's for sure. Especially with your mom. You and mm -hmm. your mom have such a lovely relationship. You guys are so cute. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we do. It's, it's just like this switch on. Yeah. Off. Yeah. 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 Serious and not serious. What do you um, what do you dream about for your future now? What do you what are you looking forward to? Uh, well, actually, I have a banner um, on my wall in my room, mm -hmm. and what this banner says it says, "Best DJ in the World 2019." Oh, may like what I meant by best DJ in the world maybe like top ten and top one hundred. Yeah, at least. Yeah. But, like, I believe in myself. Yeah. It's my dream. Yeah. Basically. So so I look at that every day and I think about it and I'm like, this is my time. <laughs> That's my time. <laughs> so I'm working on that. That's my main goal. Hmm. And, and you'll be, you would be what, 17? Wait, I'm trying to do some math here. 2019. Yeah, you'd be 17, I think. 16 or 17. Yeah, you'd be... Yeah, maybe 17. Yeah. When? You might be the youngest person ever to make that list. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Martin Garrix was at 17. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah, I think so. All right. well, I, think, I think you might squeeze in there just ahead. <laughs> yeah. Just ahead. <laughs> By one second. By one second. <laughs> <laughs> in your face. <laughs> yeah. Record. It counts. It counts. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, and I also wanted to find out if, because um, I know, you know, I think you guys are such a lovely family, and you guys are you're still so close to your your folks, and they're instrumental in guiding you um, through your growth as a musician and all the different ways that you tap into that with your dance and with your drumming and your DJing and everything. Um, how important is their guidance and support as you continue to develop? Um, well, it's definitely important. I mean, without them, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Like, yeah. they support financially as well. They support, um, even in time, by time. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes my dad gets off, off of his work just to, um, just for me to get to an event or DJ somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. So they sacrifice lots of time and... Also, my mom usually does all the photography and sometimes the editing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Me, and my dad usually carries the equipment. And, you know, my dad does everything. And sometimes they evaluate my songs um, yeah. when, when I produce. Like, I finish the song halfway. And then as listeners, you know, as a crowd, they listen to the song for me. And then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they tell me, maybe this, you should change. And sometimes I change it. A little bit, or I don't change it at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, their support helps me a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Have you been um, collaborating with, with other musicians in the last year or so? Um, I have been collaborating with mm -hmm. someone. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, it's, it's, it's Hush Hush. Someone. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's almost like my name. <laughs> okay. What'd you say? It's almost like my hidden name. Yeah, that. yeah. It's like yeah. A, this is a repeat. Yeah, There's the always a secret with, with the podcast with Alex. Mm -hmm. There's always mm -hmm. some secret yeah. lingering. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I am collaborating. Okay. Is there anything that you can singer. tell? Singer. Oh, singer. Okay. Singer. All right. Is there anything that you can tell about the project um, at this point, or can you not say anything yet? We're working on the track. Mm -hmm. It's almost done. Mm -hmm. Um. She's a great singer. Okay. She. 
Okay. She. Ooh. She. There's a clue. <laughs> that's a that's clue. another clue. <laughs> there's I'm slowly gathering them. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of cheese though. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's going to be hard to narrow it down. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I'm collaborating and I'm also going to be collaborating with um, also more um, famous DJs and producers mm -hmm. that mostly produce Future House. Mm -hmm. I contacted them and they they responded. So awesome. Hopefully we get to collaborate soon. When you contact them, what do you do? You send like an email and like a sample. Like yeah, what do you I, do? I send them an email. You know, I say you know I love your music and I do really. I mm -hmm. do enjoy their music and I always play them on my future house nights on my radio show so mm -hmm. you know I tell them everything that I know and you know like if you're interested maybe you know I really enjoy your music so you know it's just a nice friendly conversation yeah yeah just you know I I, I mean I emailed maybe like seven of those producers and only like two responded hey so. That it was the right two. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If you could collaborate with anybody, 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 like, sky's the limit, who would you, who would you want to have that happen with? Can I have, like, 20 options? Oh, yes. <laughs> 20 options. <laughs> Top 20, go. <laughs> it's hard to choose one. Yeah. Because every producer has something different. Mm hmm You know? Some producers, Martin Carrick has those little squeaky voices mm -hmm. and sometimes those interesting melodies that he has. You know, um, Dioro, the producer, he has these groovy beats. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, Dead Mouse has those nice grindy sounds. So every producer has something different. And I mean, any of those producers would be amazing to collaborate with. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter always about the producer and the genre. It depends how good the song is, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, but if I had to choose some, I would probably choose Firebeats, and I did meet them. Awesome, at the awesome. master class. Okay, I think I see. I saw a picture. I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 So I met them, and you know, I I was talking with them, and they were so friendly, and you know, I'm contacting them mm -hmm. with email by email, and hopefully this they respond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they. I think they should. Hopefully they'll, they'll listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we can have all have hope, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> if you, um, I'll ask you a, this one question that I asked you the last time. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to a kid who is, another kid who's thinking about becoming a DJ or pursuing something that they really want to do, what would you tell them? Um... Well, what would I tell you? You should actually just follow your passion. Follow what you actually love to do. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is. It can be computer electronics. I mean, yeah. I love um, I love DJing and all, but I love astronomy as well. So yeah. that could be my second passion. It doesn't. Your passion doesn't always have to be um, one passion. It can be multiple passions. But as long as you like what you do and as long as you really still truly believe that you're gonna do well with that career mm -hmm. in whatever you do it'll be good yeah yeah maybe uh there's a way to combine your these two passions ever for your songs maybe your music videos can be like space-based like mm -hmm. galaxies and solar systems well i do edit <laughs> videos and i like to put um, space and galaxies oh do you yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. nice awesome so as we kind of uh i guess start to wrap up is there anything that um we didn't uh, cover that you want to tell my listeners about anything coming up or what have you well, I'm just working on some new tracks. You can check them out on SoundCloud soon. Mm -hmm. um, just let me know on social media if you want to listen to any of my non-release tracks yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> my non-release tracks. Mm -hmm. And, and um, anything else? I hope you had a happy 4th of July. Ah, <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> we did. What did you guys do? Where were you guys? Uh, we were just um, just going on the city fireworks. Yeah. And then I lit my firecrackers and my crazy fireworks and rockets. Nice. Nice. 
It was crazy. I Good for fireworks you. Fireworks my favorite thing. Oh really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Fireworks are nice. Fireworks. We got. We went down to Fourth on Flagler mm. to to catch the fireworks there. It was. Uh, my fireworks was show was only like ten minutes. It was so <laughs> short. Really? Yeah. Oh man, that's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they missed fireworks, or they just set it off too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it's just a smaller show. It is yeah. what it is. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, your your website is. AlexArietti.com. Your Twitter handle is Arietti Music. Oh, wait, no, no it's not. Oh, wait, I know. No. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm looking it up right now as we speak. No, no, wait, no. no. Wait. Alex Arietti Music. Okay. Alex, and your Instagram no, I is. I, I said Arietti Music. I, I'm sorry. It's okay. Instagram. It's the same thing. Alex Arietti Music. SoundCloud. Yeah. Same as well. Facebook, same as well. Awesome. Ex <laughs> yeah, and Mixcloud is Alex Arrieti. Mixcloud. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. I think um, you are just getting started. Yes, it is Alex Arrieti Music. I just confirmed on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my YouTube is YouTube slash UC3F. Really? I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just For his YouTube, go to his website and click the link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make it a lot easier on everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for visiting with me again. It's always a pleasure to have you and to catch up. Um, do you want to sign off the podcast again? You're just going to say this is Alex Arietti with Curve the Cube. However you want to say it. Okay. <laughs> Compose yourself. <laughs> this is Alex Arietti with Curve the Cube. Yeah, buddy. High five. Thank you. Way to go. That right. was such a good, such a good interview. Yeah. I adore you. Yeah. You have successfully curved the cube.